covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that is gone forth out of my lips. Glory to God.
everything that it touches. Even the miry ground, even the marshy ground, even the dead sea starts living again when that river of God flows into your life. Can you say praise the Lord? Oh, hallelujah. and a hope in your spirit you wouldn't wait unless you believed come on somebody 
The Bible said Abraham believed God and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. And he sat there and believed till one day he looked up and the Lord and two other angels were standing in his tent door. How many of you believe it because you know you're going to look up and see a manifestation? Praise God, the, fat, the fatty calf that belonged for the prodigal son, he, he pinned that calf up the day that boy left and began to fatten him up. Why did he do that? He knew he was coming home. Yes. Yes. Amen. You better have a cow in your pen, so to speak, right. this morning. You better make provisions for a miracle right. to come to your house. Can you say praise the Lord? You better make room for the glory. You better asphyxiate uh, yourself so that you've got an eye view of what God is getting ready to do. Yeah. I want to tell you something. I, I have been through a lot of New Year's times and most of them, well, all of them right here in this church. <laughs> And I don't believe I've ever felt the expectancy level that I feel since we've shifted over this time. I don't know what happened, but something happened in the spirit. I somehow God opened up the deep, the fountains of the deep are coming up, and there is a major uh, 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 hope in my spirit ever since this month has begun that God is up to something and we are going to see a mighty, mighty uh, habitation and an invasion of the kingdom of God. How many know the kingdom of God has to invade yes. things? Praise the Lord. Well, you be seated. I'll preach if you don't. Amen. Uh, I've just got so much in my spirit. God just talking to me while I was in prayer this morning. Oh, how many love to get up and get in that prayer place and just see what the Father, praise the Lord, or speak to your spirit. I waited for him this morning and he came. I listened for him this morning and he spoke. If you listen, he'll talk. If you seek Him, you'll find Him. When you search for Him with all of your heart, if you ask, you shall receive. If you seek, you shall find. If you knock, it shall be open unto you. Can you say amen? For what does the Word say? Everyone that asketh receive it. Everyone that seeketh find it. And to everyone that knocketh, the door is open unto them. How many believe He's a door opener? How many know that the Lord is doing more than just opening the car door or the house door or the bedroom door? He's opening doors to dimensions of the Spirit. Yes, amen. Woo, glory to God. He's transitioning us. Yes. He's shifting us. Yes. We've changed rooms. Amen. Come on, somebody. I believe we're in the Holy of Holies this morning. I don't believe there's any veil that can cause me to disbelieve the Word of God right now in this moment I'm sitting in. I don't know uh, what it is that you may have to add to press through to get, but if you'd yield to watch here right now, ain't no veil in this room. Ain't no lattice here, folks. We're seeing Him face to face. He's revealing His glory to us. Praise God. Oh, we bless you in the name of the Lord. Thank you for being in this house this morning honor you honor your presence and most of all honor his presence amen we're going to receive tithe and offering at this time let the lord speak to you however you feel led to give this morning obey him would everyone stand and speak it by faith today this is my seed god gave it to me and i now reinvest it into his great kingdom for the work of the ministry and I expectingly await a return harvest in every area of my life. God bless you today. Hallelujah.
this morning. Praise the Lord. And I always forget to remind you, but anytime you need to put your offering on the bank card, you can just see my wife up here. She has all the means to get that done for you. And uh, I do good to remember the offering. Sometimes I get so shouting, I'm about to let everybody go. <laughs> I hadn't took one yet. But I just tell you, I just follow the Lord and He meets all the needs. Can you say amen? Praise God. They, you won't never get no pull other than that. We just follow the Lord. The Lord takes care of the rest. I seek Him first. He'll make everything else happen. Amen. If you have your Bibles this morning, I want to look at some scripture in the first chapter of Daniel and then several other places in Daniel. I'm just following the leading of the Spirit here, going as God has directed me. Wednesday night, we really got into some great things uh, concerning seeing into the Spirit realm. And how many of you understand that if we know anything, we know that this is an hour when God is requiring us to move into the revelatory gifts of the Holy Ghost and be able to discern or see into the depths of the Spirit. Amen. Because what God is revealing to us, glory be to God in this hour, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it even entered into the heart of man. And yet these things that God is giving us in this hour are not just things that have come out of the blue, but they are things which He hath prepared for them that love Him. Hello. Now, traditional view is that the old preacher gets up at the funeral home and turns in his Bible to 1 Corinthians 2 and reads and tells everybody when he says, Eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. They never do read that other verse. They always stop by saying, old folks, one day, someday, shout me down now, in the great blue and beyond, it blew out there now. Hallelujah. But that ain't where it's coming from. It's coming. I said it's coming from right out of here. Oh, glory to God. Everything God has for you is shut up on the inside of your spirit man right now. I, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. What's the treasure? We've got the revelation of the deep things of God. And these things that God are say, is said to the church now has never been said before in any other time or any other generation. And yet they were prepared before the foundation of the world. For you and I, for a people which would be created, what Psalm 102 said, remember? Thou shalt rise and have mercy on Zion for the time, yea, the set time to favor her is come. And what does that other verse say? This shall be written for a generation to come of people who shall be born. Glory to God. That shall praise the Lord. And in Isaiah 53, the, the, the prophet asks the question, uh, if he's cut off from the land of the living, who should declare his generation? But then he saw past the cross and saw the resurrection. Oh, glory to God. And what did he say? He said, oh, he shall see his seed and he shall prolong his days. Glory be to God. He shall take up his inheritance and shall divide the spoil with the strong. Glory to God. And then we look in Isaiah Psalm rather 110 and see there's a scripture that says thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. How many believe it's a day of the unveiling of all of his power and how many believe God has created a willing heart on the inside of us today that we might walk it out and speak it out and flow in it and operate in higher dimensions and higher realms of the Spirit. Amen. Well, glory. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. You cut me back just a little, Brother Tom. I feel like shouting. Anointing. I might get loud. Not really. But see, all of these things 
in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 2, Paul said when he started out, and I should have had you turn there, but I don't want to because we'll get stuck forever. But he said, my preaching and my speech when I came unto you, oh, glory to God. He said, I came not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the Spirit. Everybody say the Spirit. And now say the power. Every time we minister in this realm, there's to be a demonstration on the inside of every one of you, a release of the Spirit and the power. Oh, glory to God. Amen. The Spirit is water, who it is. The power is how it flows, operates in this earth. Can you say amen? The power of God given to you is the exceeding greatness of His power. It's beyond anything that's ever operated. The church has got to come into the full dimension, the full revelation, and the full manifestation of the power of God. Why? That it may be a glorious church. You and I have not seen a glorious church yet. We've seen a church. And I'll catch roughage for saying that, but you've not seen that glorious bride unveiled yet. The bride still argues still fusses, still has condemnation, still judges and fault finds, still moves by the, uh, uh, you know, by sectarianism and humanism and all of these things that are an enemy to the free flow of the Spirit of God. But God don't make your, don't ever mistake about it. Don't ever forget it. God will have a church, a people. It may be a people out of a people. It may be a church out of a church. Glory be to God. It may be a remnant bride, but He'll have a bride, a company, a people. Glory to God. Who will come into the full manifestation of power and dominion and truth and revelation and manifestation. Glory to God. This thing will not decrease. He set up the increase of His kingdom and there shall be no end. If you're looking for it to decrease, you're riding the wrong train this morning. It's not going to decrease. He set up the increase of His kingdom. Everybody say the increase. The increase of the power. The increase of the miraculous. The increase of the gifts. The increase of His glory. Amen. Amen. Uh, we read over and over again in the book of Acts, don't we? And the church grew daily. And what? Increased. Oh, glory to God. It increased in numbers. It increased in membership. It increased in power. In fact, one place I read in the book of Acts says, so mightily grew the Word of God and increased and it prevailed. Oh, glory to God. You wait till you can start seeing the Word prevail yes. in all of your situation. I don't care what the doctor said. I don't care what the report said. He may be sitting in one side of that desk telling you you're going to die and you might start living right in front of him. Oh, my God, yes. Do you know one time uh, uh, I was, as a child, I, we went to a daytime service in a camp meeting, me and my granddad did, and in walked this doctor uh, that pretty well looked like a bean pole, you know, long and tall and lean and skinny. And he, they had said he'd come to share his testimony. And he began to put pictures up on the screen. He was a physician, a surgeon. And in those pictures, that skinny, long, lean man was covered with tumors. Wow. I'm talking about big enough, big as big, big, big grapefruits. Huge. Some of them bigger than that. And he finally grew them so big under both his arms. He had to walk around with his arms wow. hanging out like this. But he wouldn't give up. And he kept saying God was a healer. And he kept saying that, that, that the cancer was going to die and respond to the word of the Lord. And, he, and you know what else he done? He kept on doctoring like that. And so one day, it was his privilege to speak in a surgical class, in a convention-like class, and the place was full of neurosurgeons, cancer surgeons, heart surgeons, 
back surgeons, bone surgeons, and they just filled up that little that room, conference room, and he got up and began to speak, and all of a sudden, while he was talking, every one of them, every one of them, not one here, one there, I'm talking about his arms fell down limp. All of every one of them fell off of his body. Well, glory to God. That's a glorious church. That's the way it looks when you increase. Norma Hayes had a daughter that had 32, 42, 42 growths on her body. Well, glory to God. They'd break up and bleed. He carried her to the doctor when they just had a few. The doctor took them all out and he said, Brother Hayes said they all come back and brought their cousins with them. And she broke out all over. She's just a teenager. And Brother Norma Hayes was just coming into this glorious way. He's laying in the middle of the living room floor praying. Brother Hagin had come and stayed with him, went to leave. He said, Zona, I could curse every one of them girls and they'd fall off your body. And Brother Hagin shut the door and Brother Hayes said, Oh, brother, said if he could, why didn't he do it? And Brother Hagin said, it ain't my house, and it ain't my daughter. You're going to have to take your place. So Brother Norman Hayes started the thing. He'd come in every time he got a chance to lay down in the middle of the living room floor and seek God. And one day he sought the Lord and he prayed himself out of earth and into heaven. And when he prayed himself over, the Lord spoke to him and said, If you go back in that room, and lay your hands on her and curse every one of them in my name and command them to die and dry up at the roots and fall off. I'll do it. Yes, Thank you, Jesus. And so Brother Hayes, when he came to Mother Norma, when he came out of the spirit, he walked in there and she was sitting with her little boyfriend on the sofa in the living and on the other room in the den. And he went over there and grabbed her up right in front of her little date, you know. Won't hurt. He, he prayed, he cursed him, commanded him to die. Well, from then on out, he'd go in there and say, Oh, Zona, you look so beautiful today. Well, I don't see a growth on your body. Yeah. And Zona would say, Dad, you got to stop. You're embarrassing me. My friends are here. And so when her friends were over, he'd make them, he'd say, Look at her. He said, Ain't she beautiful? He said, She don't have nothing on her, does she? And, oh, he'd make them say. And so uh, he just went along, and he said any time it came to him, he'd just walk through the house sometimes for hours with his hand in the air and say, Thank you, Jesus, for taking every one of them gross off of my daughter's body. Thank you, Jesus, that you have asked, had told me what to do. I've done it, and now I'm going to see him disappear. And one night, just one night, just one night after all of that, He's in the bedroom getting ready. She's in her room hanging up dresses. And she's picking the dress up off the bed, putting it on the hanger, and reaching in the closet. And she reached in the closet and went to pull her arm back. And all of a sudden, he said he thought the dresser turned over. He heard the worst noise. He, she started running out of the hall. She said, Daddy, Daddy, this is spooky. You're scaring me. You're scaring me. He walked out and said, Zona, what is it? She said, Daddy, look. Said, 42 bros. I counted them last night by now. Every one of them are cold. They've all disappeared. They're not there anymore. Not there anymore. Not there anymore. Grandmother Blair had a growth on the side of her big toe. And it would get irritated and get in a mess and she'd have to soak it. And one day, by that one night, the man of God laid hands on her and prayed and cursed that thing. And the next day he went by to see her and she was shoking that foot in there and that growth had got a lot of sweat and flames, you know. He said, well, Ruby, how's that growth? And how's that toe? And she picked it up to show him. And when she picked it up, she left the growth in the bowl where she was shoking the foot. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. When you go up sin, such as that, all you want to do is a glorious church operating in the power of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And so Paul said, I didn't come with what they was used to. I came with something else. He said, I come to preach something they never heard. He said, I came to speak in a hidden wisdom that's been hid from before the world was. 
Oh, glory to God. Peter tells us that the prophets prophesied about it, but prophesied that it wasn't for their day. And it wasn't for their time. Jesus said to the disciples in the 13th chapter of the book of Matthew, glory to God, blessed are your eyes, for they see. Blessed are your ears, for they hear. For such things desire the prophets to look into. The disciples have said unto them, Master, why do you only speak unto them in parables? And Jesus said, Because it is not given unto them to know the mysteries of my kingdom, but it is given unto you. Can you say praise the Lord? He said their wax full. They're already full of their own understanding. They're already full of their own doctrine. They're already overcome by their own system. Glory to God. That's what he said. He said they're flourishing. They're full. Now the people have waxed fat and on test the New Testament waxed great. The Old Testament said they're fat. They're filled up. They're crammed full of their own knowledge and their own self. But I'm asking God this morning to empty me out so He can fill me up. Hallelujah. With a brand new touch. A brand new understanding. A brand new revelation. I'm going to tell you that's a lot of our problem in Pentecost. We're too full. And I don't mean full of the Holy Ghost. We're full of ourselves. We're full of religion. Amen. We're full of our uh, denomination. We're full of our group. We're full of the way we've seen it in the past. But how many of you know the hour's come for Moab to get emptied out of that old vessel and pour it into something new? You can't put this new wine in an old wine skin. There has to be a fresh hunger. Oh, glory to God for the things of the Spirit. Amen. So, you know, he worked his way through. Paul was preaching. A lot of people didn't realize it and still don't realize it today. Paul was actually preaching from the 64th chapter of the book of Isaiah. He was quoting Scripture from there. And I tell you, most preachers and churches still today have failed to see that Paul was preaching from Isaiah 64. And in Isaiah 64, glory be to God, this is what the Lord said through the prophet. The prophet cried out, I wish you'd rend the heavens. Come on. I wish you'd split them. I wish you'd tear them apart. Well, glory to God. And you need to worry, church, he's going to. He has done it in the past and he's going to do it again. He is going to make a way for him to walk into your life, your heart, your house. Come on, somebody. When the Lord says, where is the house you built it for me? He ain't talking about wood and, and steel and concrete and what have you. He's talking about the inner man. Yes, hallelujah. You're the house. Yes. You're the temple. Yes. And Isaiah 6, 40 says, oh, that you friend to heaven. Oh, that you do what? Come down. Hallelujah. Lord have mercy. Thank you, Lord. What did your Lord do? What did your Christ do? Did he step out of heaven into earth by the declared voice of God himself? The heavens were open. Glory to God. And the Holy Ghost descended and remained upon him. And John said, I knew him not. But he that sent me to baptize said, of whom you see the Spirit descend upon and remain. Hallelujah! Noah couldn't get that dove to stay. But when it lighted on the Christ, it never needed to go anywhere again. For it found it a place to rest. Hallelujah! And the Lord said, Where is the house you built unto me? Where is the place of my rest? The heavens are my throne, but the earth is my footstool. The earth is where he's going to stand up at in his body. Hallelujah! And began to demonstrate and manifest the works of God. Glory to God. Woo! Jesus. He said to them, eyes have not seen, they've not ears have not heard. He wasn't talking about someday I'll know ain't so and so. Uh, bless your hearts. You you who think that all of that is so far away when it's just a realm away. I, I'm not saying that to uh, enrage you. I'm saying it to encourage you. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But should I say 
as well that uh, he said that in the next verse is the important key to it all. He said, but the Spirit, come on somebody, oh it searcheth, hallelujah, what did Proverbs tell us the Spirit was? The spirit of man is a candle of the Lord searching all the inward parts of the belly. Glory to God. Where is the spirit searching this morning? Way down in the depths of our spirit. God is turning a light on in this hour. Illuminating in us mysteries, treasures, hidden riches, secret places. Glory to God. Woo, that's the reason you've got to pray more now in the Spirit than you've ever prayed in your whole Christian walk is because when you get deep in earnest fervent prayer of the Spirit, you break up the fountains of the deep and you cause the treasures to start coming up onto the surface. Hallelujah! When you yield yourself so the Holy Ghost can pray through you, He comes way up out of the dead so glory to God and begins to enlighten you and bring it to your understanding. Amen. Well, glory. He searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Paul went on to say, what things knoweth the man save the spirit of that man. He went on to tell us something we've got to remember that the natural man can't receive. The things of the Spirit of God. Amen. The only person who opposes this message is he who is blind to this message. And by blind, I don't mean your physical eyesight. I mean your minds have been blinded. Lest the glorious light should appear. But he did say this. The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, neither can he know them. Now watch it now. We're going to get this word here, for they are spiritually discerned. In other words, you have to see them. <coughs> Excuse me. Or perceive them by the Holy Ghost. Amen. But this scripture that I've asked you to turn to this morning in the book of Daniel and the first verse of or the first chapter rather and I want you to look at this scripture beginning in verse 17 talking about Daniel and the Hebrews he said and as for these four children God gave them knowledge he gave them skill and all learning and wisdom and Daniel had understanding in all, everybody say all, all, visions and dreams. Come on, somebody. And at the end of the day, everybody say it's the end of the day. Yeah. Oh, glory to God. I feel the Holy Ghost. I said it's the end of the day. But honey, when the day ends, another one. Come on. Another one began. Uh, people who read the end of days and almost faint. Don't get faint hearted. When Tuesday ends, Wednesday begins. Well, glory to God. And he said at the, at the end of the days, the king said, or in other words, bring them in before me. And the prince and the eunuchs brought them in. And in verse 19 he said, the king commanded them, Oh, glory to God, this is what he are communed with them, and this is what he said among all of them that was found. Among everybody in the kingdom that was found. Among all of his magistrates and astrologers and sorcerers. Come on now. All of his cabinet and all of his men of authority. What did he say? There was none. There was none like these four Hebrew boys when they stood before the king. Daniel and the three children, now listen to it in verse 20, and all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them to be what? Ten times better. Well, glory. <laughs> Ten times better than all the magicians and all the astrologers that were in all of his realm. My God. Now that's called king.
kingdom people. Hello, church. And Daniel continued even to the first year of Cyrus, who was prophesied as the king who would release the captivity of Babylon and let the Jewish folks go back to their homeland. Now, in the setting of this story, I'll tell you why I've chose uh, some of these passages, because while I was praying in the spirit this morning about this service, the Lord spoke two words to my spirit. Amen. Inside and foresight. That's what the Spirit of God said to me. Inside and foresight. And so uh, I kind of got blessed just hearing him, but I really got blessed when I searched those words out a little bit because insight means the capacity to gain an accurate and a deep <laughs> Understanding, glory to God, accurate and deep. Uh, it is the act to the result of apprehending the inner nature of things. Well, glory. Uh, the Oxford <coughs> Dictionary says it is a clear, deep, and sometimes sudden understanding. Hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. Amen. Uh, of a, com a complicated problem or situation. My God, that blessed me. It is a clear and a deep and a sometimes sudden understanding of a complicated matter. My God. And you know what foresight is. Foresight is foreseeing. The ability to look ahead. I was preaching the other night telling you, you know, the world calls it deja vu. Amen. And they'll say, oh, I've been here before. I've seen this before. I, you sure did. Your spirit's seen it. You've seen it in the spirit. You walked there in the spirit. Now your flesh is caught up. Hello, church. Your flesh is caught up with what your spirit foreseen was going to happen. Well, glory to God. I'm on the platform sometimes and the Lord gives me a whole interpretation. But there ain't been a message yet. So I foresee that I'm going to hear a message. And I foreknow that when that message comes forth, I've already got the word for that message. You see what I'm saying? Inside and foresight. And notice the Holy Ghost didn't say nothing about hindsight. Amen. Hello. Amen. And he's not going to. Because he told Paul we're to forget yes. what's behind us. How many of you know there some things happened yesterday even that you need to forget? Oh, I know, Ooh, I know there's something happened yesterday I need to forget. There's some things happened yesterday I want to forget. There's some things happened last week I hope I'll never remember again. There's some things, well, glory to God. How many of you are with me? God didn't tell me hindsight. He said inside and foresight. And I got blessed because I got to thinking about this. And you remember that, that uh, when, see, Isaiah prophesied before the captivity of Babylon. Amen. And Jeremiah prophesied right at when it happened, as it was happening. Ezekiel prophesied during the midst of it. But God's got to raise up somebody who can prophesy you out of it. And the man he raised up to prophesy the children of Israel out of that, well, really God, was Daniel. And Daniel prayed with such power and anointing that he broke open. Glory to God. The deliverance for the children of Israel. Hallelujah to God. And what he had done when they brought him in, the Bible said already that Daniel and these three boys weren't like all the rest. They're different. They were fair to look upon. They looked like happy people, good people, blessed people. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, it matters how you look. We want you to look blessed, Amen. happy, yeah. joyful. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Ever see look the same everything? Yeah, but if I got a hundred people in this church look like they swallowed a pickle, then I'm going to have a hard time getting visitors to feel like they're in a happy environment. Amen. Yeah. 
Come on, say amen. amen. If new people come around and everybody just scowls up and goes to their car and don't speak to nobody, how many know them new people ain't going to come back very more many times? Wow. But how many know if they're greeted with the joy of the Lord and people who look like they belong here and happy to be here? Oh, glory to God. The best growth this church will ever have is by sheep begetting sheep. Shepherds can't beget sheep. Sheep beget sheep. And it's done by them seeing you love the house. You love the anointing. You love the glory. You feel it's a pleasure and an opportunity. Amen. But if you go into church and everybody looks, yes, it matters. You need to look happy. You need to look full of joy. You need to look like you're blessed. You need to look like Daniel and them came in and they in captivity and the rest of them all crying. Now the Bible said some of them hung their harp on the willow and wouldn't even sing none of the songs of Zion. But people like Ezekiel and Daniel, glory be to God. There's different call. I want to be that different one. I want to be that one who don't lose my joy who don't lose my faith. I want to be that one who can keep walking and glory to God even when all hell breaks loose and everything is fighting against it. I want to be that one who said the kingdom of God is not me nor great but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Hey, glory. And so Daniel was one of them people. I'm going to tell you something, folks. You need people in your life who just blesses you when they come in the door. Amen. Say amen. amen. And the Bible said these, the king seen them. And he knew they was different. Come on now. Uh, my friends are not in low places. My friends are in high places. Now shout. I got friends in high places. I've been in low places long enough. I'm ready to walk in high places. Well, glory to God. If you, when you, in South Alabama, they say walk in high cotton. I don't want to walk in high cotton. Could somebody say praise the Lord? What do you mean by that? Glory to God. I want somebody, amen, God, to give me favor in places that's going to lift me up and bring me up. Now, come on, somebody. I, you misery loves company. But it takes a, somebody with the Holy Ghost to come along Amen. and shake you out of your misery Amen. and say, get up, quit that whining. Amen. Shake yourself in God. Smile a while. Give your face a rest. Glory to God. Amen, Amen somebody. How many of you need people in your life just, just rough enough and honest enough to love you enough to tell you it's time to shake the dust off. It's time to get in the spirit. This thing is going to pass. Glory be to God. It ain't going to stay this way forever. Iron sharpened in mind. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. You need somebody that can rub against you and get you sharper in the spirit of God. And the king come in and looked on these and guess what? Their countenance wasn't falling. They wasn't sad. And they was of a good countenance. And so the king said, I want them in my palace. I want them in my house. And of course, the, the, the king required that all of his people look wonderful as he did. So they were fed meat. But the meat in Babylon was meat offered to idols. Meaning that to kill it, they strangled it. They had their ceremonies and then the butchers would sell it. Amen. And the Bible said in the law of Moses you could not eat meat that was strangled or meat offered unto idols. And Daniel said to the magistrate of the king, we can't defile our belly. Well, glory to God with the king's meat. And he said, well, I'll tell you what. Oh, glory to God. He said, uh, they'll kill me. If you come in there skinny and dried up and looking bad, well, glory, they'll get me. He'll kill me. And that Daniel said, give us bread and water. Come on, check on us and see how we do. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> come on, check on us. See, 
how we do. Glory to God. What he said in verse 12 it is right there, prove me, prove thy service, I beseech thee. Ten days and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. And let our countenance be looked upon before thee and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat. And as thou seest, deal with thy servant. So he consented to them. This matter proved them ten days. And at the end of ten days, their countenances appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children. Somebody say praise the Lord. Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. They came to check and said, wait a minute. How are you growing like that? Well, uh, you're not eating what we're eating. I know it. But I've got a hold of some glory on the inside of me increase of his kingdom there shall be no end can you say praise the Lord them disciples Jesus said y'all get out of here and go get some bread and when Jesus got through ministering they came back and then said you ready to eat now he said, I've already ate I've already full I'm already full I'm already been satisfied and they said we don't understand that somebody bring your dinner by here and Jesus said I have meat to eat that you know not of my meat is to do the will of him that sent glory to God do you want to prosper do you want to grow start doing the will of God start obeying the Holy Ghost oh hallelujah Woo! I preach me happy amen Everybody's always hunting what to do, what to do. Let me tell you something, folks. It's just like it is in the spirit world and in the church world, just like it is out there with a lot of people when it comes to the labor world. I ain't got time to spend all day telling you which end of the shovel to dig with. If I do, I won't never get nothing done. Huh? And some people's that way in the spirit. Let me tell you how you can learn how to cook. You don't know how to learn how to cook? Cook. You don't know, learn know how to dig, dig. Well, glory. You want to learn how to build, build. Hallelujah. But it may be crooked. Yeah, but it won't be as crooked the next time. You'll get better at it. And you'll get better at it. You burn that cornbread long enough, and you're going to get tired of eating burnt cornbread. And it's going to dawn on you. You might not take it out of the stove a little earlier. Or you might ought to check on it once in a while. Well, if you want to know how to pray, let me tell you how to pray. Just pray. You talking about prayer? Read every book it is to read on prayer and do every Bible study there is to study on prayer and still not be a prayer. You just got to pray. Oh, but I don't know why. It don't matter what you just your heart crying out. It's you talking to God. You got to pray. You want us to say, I'm going to get blessed, but I don't know. I, I, I need to learn how to give. You don't learn how to give. You just give. Yeah, but all I got is a dollar. That's all some of us have. When we started, bless God, I want you to know Jesus said right down there when that woman throwed those two mites in there, he said, this woman had given more than everybody in this room because she gave out of her walk. Hallelujah to God. You want to know how to serve God? Just jump in. Amen. Well, glory. There's too much of this ABC. One, two, three. Four steps to the five ways to the six remedies. Right. Well, shout me down now. Right. To the seven courses. Yeah. To the three experiments yeah. that'll give the two manifestations. Yes. Honey, listen to me. And one thing you need to do in your walk, and that's get spiritual. Amen. You get spiritually long, everything's good. Yeah, exactly. Jesus needed to minister. Yeah. Hallelujah. I guess I'll have to close with this one. But Jesus needed to minister. The Bible said there was a need, and the need was for him, hallelujah, to go through Samaria for him. And nobody can put it together why he need go through Samaria. He need go through Samaria because there was a woman that nobody else would minister to. But she was so thirsty and so hungry for reality yes. and revelation. Oh, thank you, Jesus. She was seeking because she knew that they didn't they said it wasn't on her mountain. 
and they said it will glory. And her people said, well, it ain't on their mountain either. It's on ours. And the Jews said, it ain't on yours, it's on mine. Well, glory. Now, can you see, can you not see that very uh, play out today? Amen. You've got to get it my way. Do it my way. No, do it the Holy Ghost way. Yes. Hallelujah. God's doing it how He wants to yes, do it. We ain't had time to teach them six months, and yet they're up prophesying. We haven't had time to, come on, church. We haven't had time to even get them in the back room and counsel them, and they're in the floor speaking in an unknown tongue. Thank you, Jesus. We haven't had time to have a board meeting over it, and yet somebody, uh, you know, uh, we, 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 we're, we're growing here. We're growing there. We haven't had time to discuss it, but... Here it is happening. What do we do? Well, we just have meat to eat. Amen. Amen. And so Jesus said he must need, everybody say needs, need. go through Samaria. Now when he went to Samaria, he, told those, he sent those disciples on a mission. This was going to be a one-on-one, -on -one, hallelujah, encounter. Amen. And sometimes God has to do, do things outside the church and then bring it to life after he's done it. Yeah. And this, you won't like this, but it's true. A lot of what he wants to use and bless and a lot of the way he'll do it would be received by the church. Because right. huh? the truth is, if the Lord brings somebody in here that's wronged you, most of you don't have a hard time not thinking about right. how they wronged you. Or if you know something about their past, yep. here your mind's going to go judging them as if you ain't got a past. Yep. Everybody's got one. Yep. And everybody's got something in it that just seem not, not be talked about. <coughs> Amen. The rest of you folks don't think you got one. Well, you got a present problem. You a liar, amen. <laughs> and you see, Jesus sent them on their journey. And when he sent them to get bread, the Bible said it was in the afternoon, it was in the noon hour, in the afternoon. Women come to draw water. She couldn't come draw water with the rest of the women because they didn't receive her. Amen. Well, glory. Don't you see the Lord is going after them that nobody else will receive and nobody else will have. He's going to bring them in. Somebody say he's bringing them in right now. And you better believe he's bringing them in right now. Now that woman had 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 uh, five husbands. And he said, he, uh, he who or you have now is not thy husband. Now, I don't know whether the one was living with it or not. The Bible don't say it. We ought to preach it if it don't say it. That's just something else used to judge that woman. I don't know what her relationship with that man was, but your Bible does not say that. It just says she had five, and he whom thou hast is not thy husband. Right. Amen. But uh, we'll leave all that with the Lord. So, but what he done was he went there in the, in the hottest time of the day and went to that well. And he didn't sit by that well. Read it. He sat on that well. And when he sat on that well, Lord be to God, he knew for her to come, she'd have to encounter him. Yes. And when she came to that well, Glory be to God. Jesus looked at her and said, Give me the drink. Yes. And that woman said, Oh, glory to God. Do you realize that the drink he wanted wasn't in that well he was sitting on? The drink he wanted, glory be to God, he wanted the drink of that woman's soul. He wanted to, amen, he wanted her to know. And he said to that woman, Give me the drink. And she said, Sir, Thou hast nothing to draw with. Oh, yes, he did. He's fixing to draw from within her something up out of her. 
He said, Thou hast nothing to draw with. And she said, Besides that, the well you're sitting on, glory be to God, is very deep. <laughs> it was deep, but it wasn't as deep as where he was fixing to go. He was getting ready to draw her because no man can come to him except the Spirit draws him. Somebody say praise the Lord. He was going to draw from the deep, all right. Glory be to God. Do you realize deep is calling under the deep this morning? Oh, hallelujah. How many can remember when the Lord let the bucket down in your well and drug up something that Isaiah said, with joy we draw waters. Hallelujah. Out of the wells of salvation, amen to God. And Jesus said to the woman after she said the well is very deep, he said, well, if you do the gift of God and who it was that speaking unto me, you would have asked me, glory be to God, for a drink. And I would have given thee a water that if thou drinkest of, you shall never thirst again. Glory to God. Whosoever drinketh of this well shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the well that I shall give him shall never thirst again. For the well that I shall give him shall be where in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Glory be to God forevermore. Hallelujah. 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 It shall be within you. Not in this well. Not in that mountain. Not in that mountain. But it shall be within you a well of water springing up in the everlasting life. You see what I'm telling you? Different from all the rest. Daniel don't look the same. Boys don't look the same. They're growing better and fairer and fatter and they're increasing. Come on, somebody. And Jesus is sitting here telling this woman, I know what you want. I know what you need. I know what you thirst for. That's why I'm here. Oh, glory to God. See, we'll respond to mouth invitations. But you've got to get in the Spirit to hear the cry of the Spirit. Uh, oh, you can respond to mouth invitation and you can bring clothes and water all day. But let me tell you something, clothes and water is good. And there's many people to reach the other. You have to reach out. But I'm telling you now, it won't satisfy what's on the inside. Good deed do it and won't do it. It's got to be an eruption of, of springing spring and up. Well, glory. Hallelujah. And whenever Jesus told that woman that she said he said she said give me this water that I thirst not again and what did Jesus say go call your husband and she said how many had she had she had already courted and married all five senses she, she had five husbands you and I know anytime you read about five things or five enemies in the Bible or five whatever, you're dealing with a lot of different things. But one thing you're dealing with is five senses that try to govern and rule you. And she said, she doesn't have five. And she's courting one now that's a six, and six is a number of man. So now she's in a relationship with the flesh, trying to find God through the flesh. And the way they've taught her to find him through the flesh is, is her people, which are Samaritans, which are a half-breed of Jews and Gentiles, which are not received, come on now, were not received to the point that they wouldn't even walk through their land. Hello? And what did her people, even though they were looked down on, they were still religious enough to say, bless God, if you get it, you got to get it in our mountain." Right? So she said to Jesus, it, it, it said, I've had five home one, and I, or, or I have no husband. Jesus said, you well said you have no husband. You had five. One you have now is not just. She said, well, I perceive you're a prophet. I perceive you're a prophet. Why did she say that? Because he told her by the Spirit. He foresaw, but he went to get there. But now what are we dealing with? Inside. He's looking in her soul and see it 
And this is exactly the way the Lord taught Brother William Brown to flow in the word of knowledge. He said, when you stand with a believer on that platform, you'll be just like I was when I sat down on the well with that woman, and I'll reveal it to you. Yes. Come on now. And that's exactly what he would say when he would start talking to somebody. All of a sudden, he'd be talking to a normal, and he'd say, am I a stranger to you? And they'd say, yes, you are. Have I ever seen you? No, yeah, no never seen you. And, and, and then he said, oh, wait a minute. I see 3274 Jefferson Avenue, and your name is uh, such and such, and you live over there, and uh, your sister is sick, and this is what's wrong, and it just unfolds just like that. And then when he's through, he no more knew what he said than a man in the moon. And he'd tell him, look at him, and tell him, he'd say, it's no different than when Jesus sat with that woman at the well. And she said, you're a prophet. Yeah. You're a prophet. And so she said to him, I know that Messiah is to come. And Jesus said, I that speak unto thee am him. Glory oh, to God. I said, glory to God. He didn't reveal himself. You won't like that. He didn't let Peter tell who he was. He didn't let them Jews know who he was. He never told the priesthood who he was until they had him on trial and he stood before Caiaphas. But to a little woman who they, even her own people who was half breeze and that were not received in society had even rejected her out of their society and would not have nothing to do with her so that she had to go draw her water at a time of day when nobody was there. It was to that woman that the revelation came. I'm the Messiah. I'm the Messiah. Why? Because what? What she had was deep. What she had was alone. What she had was deeper than their systems. Their because she said, said, my people said, and this is what she had. She said, I'm Messiah. I'm to speak unto them. He, she said, well, my people says uh, that you've got to worship on this mountain. Your people says, if you don't go to Jerusalem, you can't get it. And Jesus looked at her and she said, you worship, you know not what. He said, my people worship. They know what they worship. That's simply because where does the gospel go first? To the Jew first. He said, you know, my people know what they worship and, and whatever. But he said, there's an hour that's come on us. Well, glory to God. Whether you shall neither worship me over there or over here. But the hour is come and now is when the true worshiper shall worship me in the... And in the... For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. God is a spirit. And they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. And of course we know immediately the woman throwed her water pot down, went around and told everybody and preached the gospel glory to God. Said, come meet a man. Come see a man. Come find a man. Told me all I ever did. All of a sudden, she wasn't afraid of being received. She wasn't afraid of being rejected. She wasn't afraid of anything. Her spirit's been touched. Now, God has done something on the inside of her. She's drawn from a deep well. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And, 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 and the disciples come out, oh Lord, we got to get you fed. He said, oh brothers, I'm fine. Nothing's wrong with me. I'm full. Oh, somebody must have brought him. He said, I have me to eat that you know not have my meat to do the will of him that sent me. It was but a little bit and that woman's evangelism efforts proved to be the whole city of Samaria. Somebody say amen. Started coming up and coming out. Well, glory to God. And Jesus looked around at those disciples and said, Quit saying four months and then comes a harvest. Look, look, look out there. See, the harvest didn't come from where they thought it was coming from. It wasn't in Jerusalem, it wasn't on the mountain somewhere. Right there. Glory be to God. The Spirit was drawing them. Oh, hallelujah. We're about to see a harvest, all right. But a harvest ain't going to be just new people saying the right thing and babes. We're going to see a full, glory to God, complete harvest of people that are going to stick with it, stay with it, produce. Amen. 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 Most of what's called the harvest today is the planting. They say, help us get the harvest in. That's not the harvest. The harvest is the aftermath. The harvest is when it comes to maturity. The harvest is when you look out there and see. Well, glory to God. Blooms and blossoms. When you plant the seed, that's not the harvest. 
But everybody in the world will say, help us get in the harvest. The harvest is ready to reap. The harvest, and there, you know what they mean when they say the harvest? New converts, a new babe. That's not the harvest. The baby stage is not the harvest. It's the full-grown sons. Glory to God coming in to maturity. Hallelujah. Well, are you blessed by the Word today? Have you heard something from God? I, I may come right back in here this evening and pick up in that Daniel and we'll move right through the book and see skilled men, men who could understand visions and dreams, men who could, so we'll get over in and talk about Issachar, glory to God, who had understanding of the time and knew what Israel ought to do. God wants to give us insight yes. and foresight in these days. And we won't walk around with our heads in the sand. We won't walk around like we're in the dark. We'll know what's going on. I said we'll know what's going on. And it won't take us by surprise. We're going to be spiritual people. We're going to be people prayed up. We don't have dead services around here. We ain't got time for it. We don't have dry services. We don't take breaks from the Holy Ghost. Come on somebody. We don't need a rest from God. We rest in God. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. We don't need a break from, from, from church and the power of God. We want to be in everything God's saying and doing. We even give Him permission to talk to us in the night if He wants to. Glory to God. Then you say amen. Lord Jesus, bless these saints of God who have sat here with a hearing near to hear this message this morning. Glory to God. I thank you for the Holy Ghost that I have felt here all day long. And I ask you, God, that as we're leaving and coming back in this evening, hour six, we ask for uh, it to intensify, get stronger, <coughs> deeper, fresher, even show us further down the road. Glory to God. Uh, just take us over and do your thing in our midst tonight, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that pain has left bodies in this room today. Sickness and disease has been defeated. Glory to God. And that we enforce the defeat on your people right now. That they are healed, delivered, set free from pain, affliction, sickness, disease, and infirmity in the name of the Lord. And we declare these people the blessed of the Lord, highly favored of God, and they will and have received great things from this service today. In Jesus' name, everybody say it. Amen. And amen. God bless your hearts. We love you. Thank you for being here. We'll see you back here at 6 o'clock this evening. Amen. Be blessed in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah.